All right, so um, just to let everyone know for the recording, uh, I rebuilt my computer this weekend. Woo! Put in a brand new new processor for the system. Um, now, part of this was I purchased the newest AMD uh, processor to do this with. It's an AMD Ryzen Threadripper. Now, I'll I'm, go ahead and pretend I have any idea. Like, you might as well be speaking Klingon right now. Now, I, I just want to give people... And I'll I honestly, you were you were tweeting about it, and I couldn't figure out if Threadripper was an, a thing or a place you were buying things. <laughs> well, just, I, I had an act. Just to give you an idea, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you see this as well. Um, this was from the computer I was using in 2010. That was the Phenom 2 processor, and this is the packaging for it. I'll let you see it. And I'll put it over here so everyone else can see what I'm talking about. That's yeah. very male logo. Well, yeah, but it, it, it's, a, it, it's a box, right? Let, let's let everyone see. It is, in fact, a box. It's, it's a box. It's a standard cardboard box that the processor comes in. With like super double male phallic imagery on it. But still, a cardboard box. A box. All right. Now this was the, uh, from about three, two or three, well, uh, less, about two years ago, I'd say. This is, this is the uh, AMD's Next box. Again, I'm, I'm just showing these for, uh, so you have an idea of of where where we're coming from here. Um, this was for the FX line of processors. Show everybody over here. Come also on. a box. Come on, load you bastard! Actually, I think that's the same box. Yeah. I think you said the same thing twice. I did. God, why won't it? You're trying to trick me. I'm not trying to trick you. You're like, look at this silly Mac user. She can't even tell these two thingies apart. There you go. That and is. I can't, but that's not the point. That is that is the most... Oh, that box is redder. It's redder, yeah. But still, it's a box, right? I want to show you the box that my latest processor came in, okay? Okay. This is the fucking box. That's fancy. Look you at... Could, like, carry your lunch in that but wait but wait watch this uh well, how much does that weigh this this is i think this is at least a pound maybe two watch this shit do you see is it lighting up it lights up why do you need the box to do that i don't know yeah, because it's it's clear now. Originally, I'm doing this with my phone right now, but originally, what AMD wanted to do was they wanted to ship these out with little LEDs in them, so that they would light up. Why? But they couldn't because then they would have to be shipping batteries. Like, are you going to keep that? Do you have any use for that? It's it's a conversation piece. Also, look at, look at this, okay. This I mean, is, you could turn it into a water bowl for Grady, I guess. Watch this shit. This is how, the box, it, there comes apart. You seeing this? Look at this, this is, this is I hard. like a pre- Hard plastic, and look on the back. I don't know if you could read that. It says, unlock the power. That's upside down. There we go. Unlock the power. Watch this. It opens. That's where the processor sits, and this is this is hard. I, I don't. I don't even want to know how much this. How big is the actual product? Uh, it's it's about this size actually. This this is the size of the processor right there. So you could put it in a fucking cassette case. Yes, you could put it in again. Those boxes I showed you earlier, same company. Those boxes would have fit the processor easily. Those boxes like were about this of... big. I feel like that's a pretty egregious waste of materials. Yeah. 
like I'm 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 not like an earth mother or anything, but I feel like that's a pretty egregious just blatant plastic masturbation. <laughs> Seems uncalled for. Don't kink shame. Don't kink shame, Tara. Don't kink shame. If that's if <laughs> I suppose it could be a semen receptacle. <laughs> I'm sure there are people out there right now that got a Ziploc bag on one hand. Mouth they're looking at the show, and they're like, hey. I mean, if it's deep enough to be a fleshlight, I'm sorry, but have fun. <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, reuse. So that doesn't wind up around some poor turtle's neck. Recycle, reuse, reuse, and close the loop. You kick, God damn that fucking song. Till the day we die, I'm gonna be 80 years old on my goddamn deathbed going, recycle, reduce, reuse, close the loop. Grant now for me, it's definitely gonna be the Cars for Kids jingle. Yeah. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Oh, I yeah. Which Todd pointed something out interesting this week that like they never tell you in what way the cars help the kids or what they're gonna do with them. No. Like you could be donating cars that they use to abduct kids. They do. Yeah, it's possible. It just says cars for kids, so it could be like cars for stealing kids. We don't know. And it's and it's still not not false advertising. So that's good. Right. All right, so now we get to other horrible nonsense. <sighs> Peggy, come here, baby. Good like, enough. Fuck you. Fuck you. Peg a bow. Peg a bow. Nope. All right. Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I'm shitting. All right. How do I how, how do I segue into this? Life does not always deal you the hand it should. Shit happens. It sucks. Shit does in fact happen. And quite often you'll see on on uh, television or on the news, they'll have those feel good segments where someone has overcome um, some sort of physical yeah. issue, some sort of disease, and they turned it around and they tried to to put it on its head and make the best of like them. I'm allergic to water and all my skin burned off. But now I'm a gold medalist synchronized swimmer. Yeah, For well, instance. this guy took that in the absolute wrong goddamn direction. A terrifying drunk clown was arrested with a machete taped to his arm. Oh. And I want to point out before we get there so people understand what I'm talking about, his amputated arm. I heard American Horror Story was going to get really weird this year. Began as a lone sighting of a few clowns in South Carolina, quickly snowballed into a full-blown Harlequin pandemic last year. People suddenly spotting evil, bloodthirsty clown clowns propping up all over the country. While things stayed relatively quiet on the clown front this summer, the rogue band of Pennywisers just won't seem to go away. On Tuesday, police arrested one in Maine, ambling down a rural street, uh, rural street, with a machete taped to his amputated arm. Not to be pedantic. Hmm. But I feel like the more clear syntax would be his prosthetic arm. Well, no. Because otherwise you're taping the machete to your phantom limb, and that's some spooky shit. That's true. That's true. Or it I guess to, be, to like the you, stump of his, of his amputated yeah. arm. Like, your amputated arm isn't on you anymore. Residents first spotted the masked man in Hollis, Maine, around 6 p.m. They uh, told police the nightmarish figure, wearing a black hoodie and a clown mask, had been wandering down the road before he took off into the wood. 
I want to point out this article says into a the woods. Yeah, this the copy editor here. What no copy editor? It's the internet. No bonus. After scouring the area for an hour, police saw the clown lumber out of the forest, wielding a machine. <laughs> lumber out of the forest. forest. Yeah. The officers managed to apprehend him and unmasked him like a villain straight out of Scooby-Doo. Police identified the guy as 31-year-old Corey Berry, charged him with criminal threatening. Upon closer inspection of the blade, they saw he had duct taped the foot-long machete to his amputated arm, no, to the stump of his arm, as, kind, as a kind of makeshift weapon. Barry, whom police said was very intoxicated, told police he was trying to pull off a gag about hearing, after hearing all the previous creepy clown sightings from last year. All right. First off. I guess live your dream. Do you know why no one's making Pokemon Go jokes anymore? Because everybody stopped playing Pokemon Go? That shit was last year. Right. It's over. It's done with. The creepy clown shit was last year. You missed it. That's like so last season. Right. We're not doing creepy clowns anymore. Like, God, Gretchen, stop <laughs> trying to make clowns happen. Secondly, you're getting drunk. If, you, if while you're getting drunk, you've got a machete and some duct tape and you have the wherewithal to tape that shit to your arm. Maybe you need to stop drinking because you're becoming a really high-functioning drunk. I don't know. I feel like I'd still have the fine motor function to tape a machete to my arm if I was drunk. But would you have the inclination? I, I would never have the inclination to do, like, a whole Jason Pennywise mashup. You know, do you have, like, this this shit was like, like that's that's not my kink. <laughs> this shit was a plan though. Was it? I mean, I guess it would have to be somewhat premeditated because you have to have a clown mask and a machete at the ready. Yeah. I just why? Uh... This... And like, what was the plan? Were you just gonna wander around and be like? Okay, that was good. I gotta go. Yeah, I mean, where, where, where's the end point? What's your end game right, there? Like, what's the, what's the punchline? Yeah, how are you getting out of this one? Because... You need a punchline. Right, you can't just start that shit up and just... Like, you can't just be like, darn it, darn it, darn it, and run away. <laughs> it doesn't work. Well, you can, but that's Family Guy, and it's already been copyrighted. Oh. I've seen like two episodes of that. Smart. Very smart. That you have not seen more of it. Because it is bad. Anyway. The two episodes I saw like did not rock me. Okay. So, so I'm going to ask you a very sensitive question, Tara. Something that um, no one ever has a good answer to. I, I have yet to meet anyone who responds to this question happily or enthusiastically. How do you like your cell phone provider? Uh, you know, I'm one of those people that never really can tell the difference from one to the other. So, like, it, it works. It never doesn't work. Most of the time, I, the experience I had I was... I switched a couple years ago, and I don't really notice a difference, except the little name in the top corner is different. And it works. Normally, the people respond to this with just, oh, let me tell you about my fucking bill. Oh, I had to call customer service this one fucking time, and the motherfuckers, I was on hold 17 goddamn hours. Oh, let me tell you about these sons of bitches. We've been pretty lucky. Dan and I bundled our phones last year, and we moved me off one provider onto his provider and bundled them, and I got to keep my number and everything, and we've been pretty okay. Well, I think we actually we saved money bundling them. Well, this next story is about someone who did not have such a great experience with their cell phone provider. Except instead of just complaining about it, they did something about it. They did something incredibly stupid about it. They wrote a strongly worded letter. North Carolina woman 
with large rifle caught on camera robbing Sprint store. Police are searching for a woman seen on video with a large rifle robbing a Sprint store in North Carolina. The robbery happened on July 31st. The woman was a tattoo on her right shoulder blade, walked into the store around 725 carrying a massive rifle. She then demanded cell phones from the employee who complied with the uh, command. Um, her name is Hillary Carter. She's been identified. Uh, and let me see if I can find the article. Because apparently this article is not the same as the other article. No. It's always smart if you're going to rob a place with a giant gun. If you have a tattoo to make sure it's showing. Yeah, because that's not... Just that... Make sure all those identifying marks are really easy to see. Yeah, that, that's not, you know going to come back to places you. that sell expensive things like cell phones they definitely don't have security cameras um yeah apparently and i'm finding the right issue with it come on apparently she had a customer service issue was she really mad that they brought back that verizon guy <laughs> Well, she... I'm actually glad about it because I was worried about that guy not getting any work. I'm glad he can pay the bills. She she had initially had trouble getting a phone through Sprint. So she came back and robbed them. You know, just phys I think people lose a step here because just physically having the phone. <laughs> That's not all it takes. Doesn't mean it works. Exactly. Like, it's, you have to have a provider and probably a contract. Yeah. Like, just physically having a phone doesn't do dick. I mean, that's not true. Because if you're in a place with Wi-Fi, I suppose you can use apps. But you're not making any calls or texting. Because you need a phone number for that. Yeah. And in order to get a phone number, you have to have someone to give it to you. Like... Unless you just want something to take selfies with, I guess. I just, it, 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 and and again, yeah, you're right. They found her. They identified her ass quick. She's still at large, by the way. So guess what? The police are looking for you. You're on camera committing armed robbery, which is a felony. And if you decide to crack open and use any of those cell phones, they won't find you. Those motherfuckers are chipped. You're 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 going to jail for a phone. Yeah. And here's the irony. You know what you're not allowed to have in jail? Phone. You're not allowed to have a phone in jail. Like I understand they're expensive. They are. They're ludicrously and it's stupid how expensive they are given how common they are yeah like all the services are pretty much the same nobody's providing anything that mind-blowing and you kind of need it to exist on the grid so it is kind of ludicrously expensive what they're charging for this service that's not revolutionary anymore and that has become necessary i get that that is the truth but this is not the solution no this this you can is... get a, you can get a prepaid phone you can lobby congress to regulate the fucking industry don't but right rifle yeah that's that's it's not a solution for the have you i mean god damn have you ever seen a story where a rifle was not just the cause of more fucking problems no well maybe world war ii i guess but no that was the cause of even more fucking like, and I'm, some problems. I'm a fucking bleeding heart, Yankee, hippie piece of scum. So I I don't get the whole gun thing y'all do down there anyway. I don't get the gun thing y'all do down here either. Like, it took me some time to get used to the fact that there are guns in my home now because I married me a Missouri good old boy. I don't like the but fucking But he, he, like, he, he, it's not like, he doesn't, like, jerk off to them, like... He has some that are family heirlooms, and he is, like, a couple that if someone breaks in, like, I don't, and none of them are fucking huge. Because you don't need that as a civilian. 
Oh, oh, great. More more fun with guns. And you were just speaking about us down here. This this is actually from the state I currently reside in. Y'all down there? Y'all down here. I've learned all kinds of things being married to a Midwesterner who's a Southerner to me. Like, sometimes, like, there's a difference between being stupid and stupid. This, and like this... sometimes words like now and go have like three syllables. Cause like when he's calm, it's are you ready to go? When I'm like half an hour late, it's are you ready to go? <laughs> There's like three A's and two O's in there that get thrown in there. So I'm I'm going to throw this one into the uh list of shit. Y'all don't need to say up north. Um from South Carolina. I, I can't imagine any place... Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh. South Carolina police ask regu- residents not to shoot Bigfoot. Bigfoot's not in South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina. Police Department. Isn't he in Montana or something? Like Oregon or Washington State. Yeah, he doesn't even live there. You're just shooting your hairy cousin Buford. <laughs> Police Department South Carolina issued a warning to residents after there was an alleged Bigfoot sighting in a nearby county. On Tuesday, the Greenville Police Department South Carolina posted this on its Facebook page. Quote, if you see Bigfoot, please do not shoot at him. Slash her. They are inclusive here. As you'll most likely be wounding a fun-loving and well-intentioned person sweating in a gorilla costume. What disturbs me about this is a police department knew their populace so well, they knew, they felt the need to have to stress, look y'all, don't shoot the motherfucker. Okay? Because they, they knew that was the go-to response. That their jurisdiction, yes, is such that a lot there there's enough people that that would be like the go the go-to the first step. Step one: shoot a motherfucker. The end. <sighs> and I, I, I and also they also knew they had to explain very carefully. This isn't Bigfoot. It's someone in a costume. They don't know that. It's not. They don't know that. It's not Bigfoot, though. It could be. It couldn't be. It could be. There's no such thing as Bigfoot. I know how y'all inbreed down there. There's no such thing as Bigfoot. Well, aren't you just the fun police? There's no such thing as Bigfoot. It's not that Mexican goat sucker either. There's no such thing as chupacabras. Yes, there are. No, there's not. One washed up on Long Island a few years ago. No, it didn't. So, yeah, I just, it... (sighs) Yeah, I don't, like... There are very few situations in which your first instinct should be to shoot. Zombies. But also then, not real. Even then, yeah, like you gotta you gotta really do some tests and make sure it's a zombie zombie and not your buddy Tyler playing a funny prank. You know, like throw a rock and if they say ow, probably not a zombie. Probably not a zombie. Yeah. But <sighs> yeah, there there are not a lot of situations where shoot first is actually a great strategy. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake, why this again? It was not a dead raccoon, the Montauk monster. That's just what they want you to think. All right. This. What is it about fast food? Palm Island. What is it? What is it about fast food restaurants that causes such stupid ass drama? I mean, it's like. Trans fats. It's like someone high fructose corn syrup. When they get in the proximity of the fast food restaurant, suddenly shit they would never do in any other circumstance becomes 
the first thing they do. Yeah. Like, there was that time I was table dancing for McNuggets. I'm not proud of it. Cucumber rage leads to a man's arrest. What if you come across a Nazi? No, you should not just shoot them, because that's illegal. That's 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 actually that's murder. That's still murder, right. One, One of, of the, the worst, worst crimes, crimes. <laughs> yes. Even if they're a Nazi, you're still not allowed to murder them. Let's just be clear on that. Cucumber rage leads to man's arrest at Wendy's. Cuc cucumber... In sense, there were not enough cucumbers in his salad. A not enough? A Pennsylvania man allegedly threatened the life of a Wendy's employee and later sought to drive away from the fast food eatery while the police officer had his arm inside the suspect's vehicle. Police say Theodore Gunderson, 58, entered the Wendy's in Earl's Township and ordered a salad. Upon receiving his food, the 5'8", 240-pound Gunderson, quote, immediately caused a disturbance in the business by throwing the salad at an employee because the salad did not have enough cucumbers. Not enough cucumbers. Cucumbers and then cucumbers are a space waster. I like cucumbers. I mean, nobody likes. I do. I like cucumbers. Like they're just big crunchy things that don't have a flavor. They don't even taste like anything. They do. They taste like cucumbers. They're just there to take up space in there. You never had cucumber water? They taste like cucumbers. Cucumber water? Yeah, they, they, there's the places with the water, and they'll put cucumber slices in the water. In, in the in the water jug. Why would you do that when you could do lemons? Well, they do that too. They have lemon water and they have cucumber water. But one of those is gross and one isn't. It's not gross. It's good. The cucumbers is good. They're good for you. But you anyway, Tara, I think we're getting a little away from the point <laughs> of a death threat. Off track. We'll bring it back. Of a death threat. Gunderson then threatened the employee, saying, quote, if I had a gun or knife, you would be the first to go over cucumbers. Now, th th here's the better part. When a New Holland Police Department patrolman arrived at the restaurant, uh, Gunderson was inside his car. The defendant then refused to put his window down or get out of the vehicle. Okay, you don't get to do that. You no. don't get to decide, you know what, I'm opting out of the police thing today. You don't. I, I, no, no, you, you, you're not arresting me. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I, I do not consent to this arrest, no. 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 After Gunderson lowered his window, uh, Officer Michael Sprecht uh, told him he was not free to leave. and was being placed under arrest. The cop tried to grab the keys. Gunderson began to drive away with the officer's hand and arm inside the vehicle. You, you're not going, you're, you're they're you not. You definitely can't do that. It's not like when you leave the scene, everything's fine. It's not a reset. Right. You don't, we've said it before, like you don't get home and it's like hide and seek where you're like safe. No. Can't get me. It's I can't a, be it. It's not like. You're the, still going to be it. In the real world, when you leave a location, they don't cut. The scene doesn't change right. to another location. There's not a B storyline going on, okay? No. It's it's not. It's all you, and they're going to have your license, and you're going to jail. Over fucking cucumbers. Fucking, who gives a you death? You decided you should threaten to murder somebody over cucumbers. I have never had fast food, good or bad, that has ever prompted me to issue a death threat. Like, alternately, you know what you could have done? You could have been like, hey, could I have some more cucumber? They'll do it. Because it's customer and service. You know what would happen then? You would have gotten more cucumber. Yes. And not gone to jail. Yes. Because they're pretty. If you make a more or less reasonable request of someone in retail, like it or not, they have to accede to they it. They have to do it. They got to do it. And sometimes they're so beaten down that even if they're supposed to charge you for it, 
they'll just look the other way because it's not worth fighting with you. Yeah, it's it's you're t- like I can't tell you how many times I was probably like I we had a sample limit when I worked at Sephora and people would ask for like people I could tell were going to put up a fight would ask for like six samples and I was supposed to give them three and I just feel like you know what I'm fine. Nah, it's just Sephora's not going to go under because I gave you an extra sample so you don't yell at me. Yeah. Fine. It's it's not like they don't get paid enough to worry about stuff like that. They also don't get paid enough to get a death threat. It's a fuck it. It's definitely like, fucking not. How did we get to the point where got where death threat is now as common as as saying good morning? I've told you about the guy I worked with at Starbucks who someone threatened to beat him up in the parking lot because we charged we were charging sixty cents for extra caramel. How are you doing today? I'm gonna fucking kill you. No, and he didn't say the- we were going to charge you. He said, I can give it to you this time, next time, just so you know it's a 60 cent charge. So he wasn't even charging him then. But this is how we treat people in the service industry now. Because you're not human. If you were a real person, you'd have a real job. You are a real job. That, that That's the thing. Dealing with you is a real job. That's how the public is. Every single one of you motherfuckers dealing with you is a fucking job. Oh, speaking of someone else who had a fucking job, um, the janitors at the Orlando International Airport. Did you hear about this one? I don't think so. I keep up with the aviation news, mainly the the delays and how the shit... Because it, it's one of the things that kind of fascinates me for a weird reason. It's like dominoes. Everything has to run in a precise order. Things have to get to one place and leave, and it all has to run exactly right. Because if well, it... have you been following at all what's happening with the New York Metro Area Transit System this summer? Yeah, it's a shit show. Like I have friends, it's taking them two hours to get to work every day. If any one little element gets knocked out of alignment, the whole thing goes fuckery sideways. So I pay attention to it all often. And this was different. Toilet flush delays thousands of passengers at the Orlando International Airport. Single flush of a toilet at the Orlando International Airport over the weekend ended up delaying thousands of passengers as a hazmat team cleaned up sewage that flowed into one of the airport's custom areas. Investigation is ongoing to what caused the toilet issue, but it appears someone was trying to flush the contents of a suitcase. Okay, there's no Ministry of Magic in Orlando. No, that's not how you get to, like, that's not how you get to Universal Harry Potter World. You gotta buy a ticket, you gotta go in the entrance. There's no fucking shortcut, muggle. So what happened here was someone was trying to get something through customs. Yeah. And realized they were about to get caught. And thought, hey, I can get out of this. And they were wrong. And the thing is, if you were quick enough, you could have probably just tossed it in the bathroom garbage. Yes. And fucking run for it, gotten through customs, and by the time they figured it out, you could have been gone. Yeah, they'll find it, like... Six hours later, when they change that garbage. If they even find the shit. True, because who goes through the garbage when they change it? Right. It's it's not... I mean, whoever was supposed to receive whatever you were taking, they weren't going to get it. But apparently you were willing to put it down the toilet anyway. Yeah. So why did you try to use the... Why? What? 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 So now, thousands of people... You see, this stuff escalates the more people are inconvenienced. Putting the muggle in smuggle. (laughs) Very good. The more people you inconvenience, the more flights you delay, the more money you cost people, the more they're interested in locking your ass up. 
This is a I'm quick... really interested in knowing who exactly to blame for that millions of dollars they lost today. When they got to call in a hazmat team, and and, and I promise you that smell is not coming out for a while. Well, how like uh, if the customs area was carpeted? I only have to imagine at the customs area, the people arriving from outside the U.S. They're sniffing and they're going. You know, I heard America was a shithole now, but I didn't mean, think it was literal. Yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. Yeah, I know. You can smell it. Oh. Uh, finally this week, also from... Flo oh, God. This mugshot. This... We love a good mugshot. This fucking guy. Wow. Um, everybody, drink this one in. He's special. Wow. Uh, That's man. like Scream era Skeet Ulrich hair. <laughs> Police man causes $100,000 of damage to liquor store construction site. According to Crestview Police, a 32-year-old free point... Freeport man is in custody following a Saturday night rampage. We love a good rampage here, don't we? Ramp we do. Rampage caused more than $100,000 in damage wow. to the liquor store under construction at the Crestview Walmart and construction equipment. Around 9, 10 p.m., the suspect, Matthew Horace Jones, used a forklift to damage the building under construction. According to police, Jones allegedly broke into the fenced-in construction site uh, using a JCB extendable forklift parked on the job site. The building under construction was destroyed. Additionally, the suspect damaged a city fire hydrant and a two-inch water meter worth about $3,200. Crestview police received calls the suspect was throwing cinder blocks off the scaffolding into the construction zone. Wow. When officers arrived on the scene, Jones aimed the forklift toward officers. Officers stopped Jones at gunpoint and were able to detain him. Here's the kicker here. Jones stated his name was, quote, Alice Wonderland, and he was told to commit the offenses by a hookah-smoking caterpillar. Mm-hmm. No. You got the bad jugs, my friend. You, you got... You got the very bad drugs. With they, that, that is. Uh... Like. I don't like Walmart either. But I feel like that's a slight overreaction. Well, he said allegedly told police he had a problem with Walmart building a place to sell alcohol. Oh, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And also... Nobody, nobody gives a fuck what you think about that. Yeah. And also, you are on drugs, my friend. Yeah. Alcohol would actually probably be a productive step down from where you are. Let he who is not receiving orders to destroy a building from a talking caterpillar... Not throw stones. Cast the first cinder block. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I, motherfucker. Yeah, can you, I can just imagine, just, just picture how fucked up you have to be to get to the point where a talking caterpillar is telling you to smash buildings with a stolen forklift and you're going, okay, this is cool. This, yeah. I see nothing wrong. I mean, there's a part in Twin Peaks where a little tree with a fleshy bulb on its head told Kyle McLaughlin to rip a guy's hand off. But that's David Lynch, and he doesn't direct reality. Thank God. No. No, I'd say uh, someone more akin to uh, Kubrick or uh, maybe... I don't know. I feel like these days it's Snyder. It is, it is it is a little Zack Snyder out there right now, isn't it? It's because everybody's just whipping their dick out all the time. Yeah, 
I mean, we we saw Batman versus Superman, Lex Luthor throwing a glass of piss around, and you're like, that would never happen in real life. And then we had this year, mm -hmm. and now you're thinking, yeah, that could probably happen. That's that's yeah. probably a thing that's going. It happen. did last weekend. They were the uh, the Nazis were were spraying the media with water guns filled with urine. They got Katie Couric. I would, I would all, I would like a, a, a caterpillar talking, telling me to do things. That seems like a, a sound plan right now. Right? In comparison. I mean, it's all about perspective, really. Yeah. You know, five, five minutes ago, I was like, listen to a talking caterpillar. What the shit? Caterpillar man? telling you to take down the fucking Walmart? Doesn't seem so bad right now, Doesn't does it? seem so bad it's all of a Nazi sudden. Nazis spraying people with urine. And people are defending... Their First Amendment rights, which they do have, but that doesn't include spraying people with urine. Yes, that is assault. Yes, it is. But it's ironic assault, so it doesn't count, yeah. right? And also, but my rights. Yeah. So I guess the first thing we learned this week is, um, I guess the talk caterpillar isn't always wrong. No, what we learned is don't. There, don't do whatever drugs that would make you think taking advice from. If you don't like something Walmart's doing, you could just not shop there. Yeah, that is an option too. You could just shop somewhere else. There's Target. There are parts in this country where they're actually that actually is not an option. I should say because Walmart drove all the other businesses out of town. So. Oh, I Assuming got, you have the option. I goddamn guarantee you Amazon will deliver you shit. Yeah. Amazon, do, Amazon doesn't care if you're in the fucking North goddamn pole. They will get your shit to you. <laughs> They'll send a little drone. They'll send something. We've learned that uh, <laughs> if you are worried about trying to get through customs, if you are that concerned to the point where you're going to cause a fucking flood in the bathroom. You're not of it. Maybe mule is not the career choice. <laughs> Maybe not. You know, you probably don't have the temperament. I mean, shit, at the very least, if you can't find somebody who's willing to eat a charge to go through customs, your yeah. smuggling operation is not going to be around for much longer anyway. Because that's kind of how that works. They have to be more scared of you than they are of going to jail. And if they're not scared of you, they're going to flood a fucking airport with shit. This is not, you know, the kind of wisdom I thought I'd be dispensing. And flying is flying is awful enough anymore. Nobody needs to have their shoes covered in shit on top of everything else. Because you have to touch those shoes when you take them off. We've learned you can't opt out of getting arrested. That's that's not one of those, you know, it's not something you could just say, no, I'll do that later. I, 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 I'd rather not. No, I, no, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 I decline. Thank you, but no thank. Yeah, no. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really go for that. Yeah, even if you're polite about it, you can't say, no, thank you. I would not like to be arrested. And incidentally, just trying to drive off with the cop's arm still in your car, not polite. Not Very polite. bad manners. Yeah. And that's also something you can be charged with, so you know, mm -hmm. you're making it work. Uh, we've learned Bigfoot is not real. Please do not shoot at him. He might be real, but don't shoot at him anyway. He's not real. Because we need to learn about him. Tara, there is no Bigfoot. Okay. There is no Bigfoot. We've learned that typically every instance where you have to use a rifle, justified or otherwise, particularly otherwise, just make shit worse in some way yeah. or another. Just try something else first. Have you tried customer service? Yeah. Instead of using a rifle. Yeah. And Maybe don't make that your first step. And finally, we've learned overcoming hardship is an admirable thing. But not when you're taping a machete to your arm. Drunk and wandering down a road with a clown mask. I mean, yay for chasing your goals. You, you did. You are living the dream. That's. It's just a stupid dream. It's a stupid dream. 
but you lived your dream. Maybe don't do it again. Maybe just cross that off the bucket list and be done with it. You say that, and he's probably going, okay, I can't do the machete. What else can I tape to my arm? You know, in that Sharknado movie, that chick had a circular saw for a hand. That's probably better. Next week, we're going to have, you know, a story about the flamethrower clown. Yay! You got to admit, that's going to be like 10 times more awesome, though. Why? Why? Why are you encouraging them? 